First, I'm going to give you a little bit of background on what's behind the creation of this project. Growing up, I was raised in a very creative family. My parents met when they were both studying fine art at university in Montreal. We didn't have a television in our home until I was 12, but there was always art supplies available, and we would often draw together from the time I was too young to remember until I went off to university myself. Now, it's natural for teenagers to spend more time with friends and begin to focus more on developing their own tastes and identities. That can often mean less leisure time spent with parents. I was no different in my teen years, often preferring the company of my peers and spending less time with my parents. However, we did continue to take time most weeks to come together around the dining room table for at least one evening a week, drink tea, eat toast with honey and cinnamon, and draw together. Sometimes we would just free draw, while other times we would play a collaborative drawing game. We would take turns choosing music to play for each other, crack jokes, draw, and chat. It was a great low pressure way to spend time together, not staring at a screen, but talking, having creative fun, and sharing music. They didn't love everything I was enjoying music wise, but they appreciated hearing it and hearing about what excited me about it. And I tried not to torture them with too much music by artists that they didn't enjoy. I got to hear a wide range of music they loved and hear stories from their lives that they connected to some of those songs and musicians. Although they were experienced artists and I was not as practiced or technically skilled, I always felt that they liked my drawings and collaborating on group drawings with me. I did grow as an artist over the years we collaborated, but the best thing was how it helped us maintain our connection to each other. I have continued to play drawing games with friends through university and beyond, getting to know friends more deeply, discovering new music, and having lots of laughs along the way. I would love for you and your friends, or you and your family, or you and your online bubble to enjoy the same rich experience. Let's draw together. Before we start, I'd like to talk a little bit about intention and a word or two about the age of the participants. So in terms of intention, it's important that you create a non-judgmental space. Everyone has different levels of experience, practice, ability, and comfort with drawing, and that should be okay. These games are meant to be first and foremost fun. It's a collaboration, so don't compete. Try to do your best and work with what each of your collaborators has created. Now, I think we've all met that parent or teacher that corrects children on whether something they are drawing is correct, i.e. trees aren't supposed to be neon pink. Let's not be that person to each other. Of course, trees can be neon pink. Trees can have hundreds of eyes and feathers instead of leaves. In our imaginations and creative expressions, nothing is forbidden. Everything is permitted. In terms of the age of participants, while draw together is for groups of all ages, young children should be closely monitored with some of the sharper and swallowable materials and or given only the utensils appropriate to them at their guardian's discretion. Also, some of the games may make more sense for some of the participants than others. The selection of which games to play and how to play them can and should be adapted to reflect the preferences and needs of the participants. For example, when engaged in a collaborative drawing game, if some participants are quicker than others, they can be encouraged to start a personal drawing that they can work on while others in the group finish their contributions to the group pieces, rather than everyone feeling they have to work at the same speed. It's no fun to rush. All right, so let's get started. First up, you wanna brew some tea. Now, Bay Woodyard has made some incredible tea specifically for the festival, and you should find it inside the Icebox Festival in a box. So find the tea, set it up, boil some water, get ready and, and brew that tea. And while it's brewing, while it's steeping, let's select and amplify some music for the drawing. So feel free to prepare some playlists, whether you use a um, something like Spotify or Apple Music and stream, or you want to put together a, a playlist on your device, um, put together some CDs, however you listen to music, Pull that together and you're going to take turns. So maybe every half hour to an hour, you'll switch um, whoever has control over the music and pick things that you think will be appropriate to the people that you're drawing with. 
you want to you want to pick some nice things and um, things that you think might inspire uh, creative thinking and drawing and be fun to draw to. Now I've uh, worked with a local label and distributor called Seance Center and uh, if you go to uh, the link that I've put in the PDF um, or type it in from from the paper that you got within the festival in a box and that'll take you to a couple of sets that I've recorded under my DJ Ombudsman moniker and a wonderful selection put together by the people at Seance Center. If they don't work for you, put together your own playlist uh, and make something that you know that you're going to enjoy listening to while you play. Then, very importantly, put your mobile devices aside, turn off audible notifications, and set up a comfortable space to share the drawing utensils, drink tea, and listen to music. Anything from a dining table with chairs to a central coffee table for the tea and drawing utensils and individual clipboards for each of the participants to use while lounging on the couch and drawing or uh, separate tables, whatever works for you in your environment, you want to be comfortable. So the first game, I call it Draw Together. Now I know that's the name of the project, but it's basically the inspiration for the project. So Draw Together is the game I grew up on and I practice it still to this day. You each start a piece in one medium. So you've each got a separate piece of paper and you pick a medium, whether that's pen, pencil, chalk pastel, pencil crayons, crayons, etc. If you have some other materials, some utensils around the house that you'd like to draw with, feel free. Uh, the reason I suggest doing each person selecting a different medium to work in is so that when you trade the pieces, you can really in the final, once you fi finish the piece, you can really see everybody's different work. So all the different layers of work come through and you're able to identify who did what, and it's kind of fun. But really, there are no hard and fast rules to this game. I encourage you to play it as you'd like. So if you all wanna work with pencil or you all wanna work with chalk pastels or pencil crayons, that's good too. In fact, if you do it that way, the piece will integrate better. You won't see who did what, but it may look more complete when it's done. So all these rules are meant to be sort of played with and creatively just explore. You want to each start a piece. Create a vibe, create a composition, but make sure to leave some space because the next people that you're going to trade those with are going to want to contribute as well. So you need to leave some space for them or you'll all be drawing on top of each other. So once you've set up a general composition and a feeling and a vibe, trade the piece to the person next to you when they're ready. Now everybody works at their own pace. So if the person next, if you finish really early and the person next to you is still drawing, don't rush them. Maybe just start another drawing of your own just onto the side and play with that until everybody's ready to trade. And the person who started each drawing, once everybody's had a chance to do a, do a contribution to each of the pieces, it should return to the person who started it and they can do a final pass on the drawing if that's something they'd like to do. Now the final drawings might be okay, they might be great, or they might not be so good, but they get better the more you play and discover strategies for collaborating well together. Some of those strategies that I've discovered are really try not to make a habit of obscuring other participants' work too much, or intentionally breaking the original artist's composition, vibe, or intention. Reciprocally, don't take it too seriously. If you started a drawing and it didn't go where you wanted it to, don't stress it. It's all part of the challenge and the fun. The next game I'd like to explain is called Exquisite Corpse. Now, Exquisite Corpse is something that you may be familiar with. It's a really fun collaborative art game, and it can also be done in a written form. I've seen lots of people do sort of a, a version of it where um, you collaborate and create a story together. We're gonna focus on the drawing version that was originally championed by the French Surrealists. And um, so to start, each participant starts by folding a piece of paper into sections equal to the number of participants that you're playing with. So you each have a folded piece of paper, and then you each start drawing on the first section of the piece of paper, making sure to leave a little bit of each line that ends at the fold to run over the edge of the fold. So oftentimes I find I have to I do my drawing right up to the line, and then I unfold it, 
I put a little line extending over that fold from the end of each of the lines that I've drawn and then I fold it back. And then when you fold it back, you want to fold it in such a way that the next section what, that you have the little uh, lines drawn over the edges, you want to fold it so that what you just drew is not visible. Just the little bits of line over the edge of the fold are visible to the next player. Then you pass it to the next person when they're ready and they contribute to it, doing it exactly the same way. They'll, they'll draw something that extends those lines that they see past the fold and create a drawing in their section. And then when they get to the fold, same thing. Extend those lines over the fold, then fold it so that you can't see, the next person can't see what you've drawn. And you do that, you repeat it all the way around the circle of participants until everybody's had a turn. And then voila, you open it up and you have a crazy drawing where you've all collaborated to create it. And uh, it, because you can't see what the other person's doing, you're just going on the, the little tails from what they've, they've drawn and left over the edge of the fold. You get really creative, wild, interesting compositions. And this, this game often works best if you're each using the same media. Uh, so, you know, you can choose pen, pencil, crayon, etc. But what it does is, as dramatically different as, as the drawings on each fold are, um, using the same um, either color or material, uh, utensil for drawing, it'll help unify the final pieces. Another fun game, although a longer form game, that you can play. So I often play it with one other person over a longer period, like an afternoon. So this game is called Maze and it's pretty self-explanatory. You each get a piece of paper and sometimes it takes multiple drafts I find to work out a good maze, but you get a piece of paper. In this case, I suggest using a ruler or you can draw it free form. Uh, it might be a little easier with a ruler. You might even wanna use some graph paper if you have it handy. Um, but you want to use a pencil, or initially at least, and you draw, you create a maze. Generally, you want to have uh, a center or a, a goal for your maze. Maybe it's to get out the other end of the maze, um, but you generally have a destination and a starting point. And what you want to do is create a maze that takes people on all kinds of wrong, dead ends, um, and takes quite a while to figure out and get all the way through to the other side or to the center of the maze. Uh, I've seen mazes done in all kinds of fantastic shapes. So you can draw an exterior shape before you start if you want to get creative with that. I've seen some great circular mazes, square mazes, but they can be any, any shape imaginable. Um, you just have to define what the outer borders of the maze are going to be. And then I suggest drawing with pencil because if you make a mistake or you you create a dead end and you it's a dead end dead end and there's no way for anybody to get through the maze then you want to erase that with an eraser and continue drawing until you've worked out your entire maze and it's confusing and challenging for the person who's going to be trying to get through it once you've done that then you can go over the lines of your maze with a pen and i recommend doing this so that um it's first of all it's stronger it's more clear uh, what the lines are that, that people have to navigate. But also it allows then for, uh, once you've outlined it all in pen, then you can erase the original pencil marks and you're just left with a nice hand-drawn, but in, in pen, maze. And then the people that want to take turns going through the maze can use a pencil and don't press too hard, but then you can erase their pencil marks afterwards and you can use it again with other people. Another thing you can do is um, once you've made your maze uh, and you've done all of the, the outlining in pen, you can also um, trace it and re retrace it. Or you could, um, I think uh, if you have access to a scanner or a photocopier, then you could reproduce it multiple times and give it away to all kinds of friends and family to try it on their own, send it in a letter to somebody. Um, it's a fun activity, but it does tend to take a little longer than the, some of the other games. So it's a great afternoon activity and something that you can put a lot of energy and attention into. Now the last game, it's hardly even a game. It's free drawing and it's something I love to do 
while I'm in a meeting, while I'm talking on the phone, but it's also fun to actually put some focused attention into it with the right drawing materials. So grab a piece of paper, everybody can grab a piece of paper and just draw freely. Take your time, there's nobody waiting on you. You can just draw and draw and draw and complete a, a full piece. If you get frustrated with what you're drawing, scrap it, start another drawing. There's no pressure to it. It's all about hanging out together, listening to music, drinking tea and having fun drawing. And if you get stuck, I've got some suggestions on that because we all get creatively stuck, intimidated by the blank page. And here are some things and themes that I've found can spark imagination and get things started. So in no order of importance, just some things that I think can inspire animals, birds, fish, made up creatures, monsters, dragons, etc. The sun, the moon, other elements of nature or symbols that are important to you. Patterns, they can be abstract, they can be like repeating step and repeat patterns. Design your own wallpaper or tiles. A dream house. Now it can be really fun to do the layout and the architecture of a house. You don't have to be an architect to have fun drawing a house. So it can be just the rooms, it can be the things in the rooms, it can be a whole layout for a house. Geometric shapes, feelings, vibes, energy. Now those may sound like they're hard to do, but if you reach into yourself and try and get a sense of how you're feeling and why, then you can express that energy onto the page and it can be abstract, it can have elements of things that are real in them, you decide. Other interesting things to draw are an alien world, something purely from the imagination. Imagine what it would be like on another planet. Maybe there's aliens there. Maybe it's one that we haven't discovered. What would that look like? Draw something from the future or the past. Now from the past, you can have reference points. You can look at things like armor or historical scenes. The future, well, we've seen lots of science fiction movies and things like that, but you can pull it straight out of your mind as well. What is the future that you see? You can draw what's in front of you. Get a mirror and do a self-portrait or draw a tableau. Draw what the people sitting in front of you or the cat in the window. If it's something that moves regularly, it might be more of a challenge, but that can be fun too. A still life can be a much simpler thing to draw, but then it's always challenging to draw something perfectly realistic. So you can stylize it, you can make it somewhat realistic. It's up to you. Another thing you can do is a story. And sometimes it's fun to collaborate on a story, come up with a story, and then I'll take turns trying to illustrate elements of that story and put them together to share with people. You can also do an interior portrait. Rather than trying to draw a realistic self-portrait, which you can also do if you'd like, why not draw an emotional portrait? Use color and different materials to express how you feel. Whether you use elements of realism or go strictly abstract is up to you. Now there's a couple of things that I would like to share with you that are very simple to help make your drawings a little more powerful, a little more focused, and a little bit more legible for people. It's well worth taking a little time to read up on composition because composition can add power and direction and energy to any drawing. So when you have a chance, if you're interested, maybe look up composition and art and look at some of the different thing techniques that can be done. There's central figure, there's all kinds of things. There's the golden ratio and there's a little bit of magic in it. So if you have the time and the inclination, I highly recommend reading up a little bit on composition and color theory. Color and how it's used can really affect people emotionally. It can affect how people understand the images you're making. And it also gives them a lot of different types of power, whether that's a subtle, soft approach or a dramatic, high contrast approach. There's a lot of different ways that color can be used to really affect and change how people see your drawings. So I highly recommend spending a little time researching on your own if you're interested, there's a lot of different techniques that have been discovered and amplified over generations and generations and generations. And 
I highly recommend just doing your own thing too and discovering through trial and error and practice and what feels right for you. And that's often how you come up with your own signature style and the way that people see and recognize your work is based on, oh, he does that a little differently. Or, oh, she's doing that in a much different way than I've seen in the past. So don't be afraid to try new things and to just explore. So there you have Draw Together, a few different great games either to play on your own or with groups of friends. There's a lot of different options there. I just encourage you to draw, listen to music, and share time together in a comfortable, relaxed way. I'm going to do a little bit of a drawing with myself. So please enjoy the rest of the video and take time to come together and draw together.